hell? Jesus. Feo. Ugh. The $129 Fio K11 is an all-in-one DAC and headphone amplifier sent to me by the company, so I put it through its paces. Then later, I compare it to one of my favorite DACs, the Topping DX3 Plus Pro, which costs $70 more at about $199. As I said earlier, Fio sent this at no charge. So let's do a quick unboxing. So the Fio comes in this pretty decent looking box and we just rip open the outside cellophane, get right into the packaging. Interesting piece to note, there's no top cover. So that's kind of confusing. You think there's a little box on top, but there's not. Inside is just the power adapter and the um, USB connector to your computer and then a 6.35 millimeter jack for your IEMs. The manual inside is in multiple languages, starts off with English and Chinese, and then you just get to the main product. And that is pretty much the entire thing. Nice rubber back. On the back is power in, USB in, optical coaxial, and then line outs. That's it. Setup was extremely easy as Windows 10 Pro immediately recognized it on my Dell Precision 7750 laptop. Overall size of the K11 is near perfect. Lots of space for connections. In a small to medium sized desktop product, it has a nice rubber bottom to keep it from slipping around to curved edges. And the overall build quality, especially with the rounded curves, would make you think it costs a lot more than $129. Now DAX have progressed over the past few years to the point where honestly, they're nearly all transparent. So for those of you interested in only a DAC, there are only a few bad DACs still built. I thought the Fio K11 was one of the bad DACs. Out of the box, after maybe an hour of listening at most, I literally almost stopped reviewing it. I was hearing sibilance and I'm not talking about sibilance you had to strain to hear. It was obvious and annoying. So to double check my test tracks, I switched my reference DAC amp, the RME ADI2 DAC, FS. Let me note that the RME isn't perfect. I'd like to always have a little more power in an amplifier. Its menu system is obscure and confusing, and it lacks a 4.4 millimeter balanced headphone jack, which the Fio K11 has. It also is expensive. It set my dad back $1,200. However, it is entirely transparent. And coupled with the ability to have 20 preset EQs, this is a godsend when using different headphones that need a little bit of tweaking. All reviewers have to have a reference system, not because they're perfect, but because you need to compare products human memory should not be relied on. The number of times I had a great Merlot while listening to Bish can really change one's perception of sound quality. So, were my test tracks affected? Even though I used the same ones over and over, you never know when your parents play with your computer files and convert everything to MP3 and save some disk areas. Had my wine gone bad? Hard to believe since I only opened the second bottle an hour prior. Or was the issue with the K11? So I listened again to the tracks on the RME. The RME didn't exhibit any sibilance. Zilch, nada, none, zero, nil, nothing, sippo, diddly squat, jack, el nino. You get the idea. So the sibilance was only coming from the K11. Now to be completely honest, I often check out other reviewers who reviewed a product I'm testing to make sure I don't miss anything important. And oh my God, some reviewers are actually more boring than I am. I don't want to listen to some guy read off the spec sheet for two minutes. So I'll make the assumption you can read that in case you have some weird files that something will or won't play. And I know you'd much rather hear me express 10 different words that mean nothing 
because that allows me to stress a point without using profanity. And it helps increase my viewers' vocabulary, which according to YouTube analytics, is a full grade level below YouTuber Alpamipa subscriber base. But I regress. So I'm utterly confused as to why no other reviewers thought this was a bad DAC amp. Giz Audio thought it sounded good. Necessarily, it still falls within the realm of staying fairly neutral and is transparent enough to keep things from sounding unnatural. Reviews thought it was pretty clean, but a little clinical. Oh, for sure. What you're getting here is a pretty clean sounding amp DAC. It's a little bit on the clinical side, but I don't find it to be sterile. Phonio wrote, Fio's K11, while positioned as a budget offering, defies expectations with specs that promise much and deliver more. Ian Fan thought it was balanced. This one is balanced, right? It's just a little bit above neutral, uh, and it sounds so, so natural. I think it sounded like shit, and that's not profanity, that's fact. I'm just about to write a trash review without even doing my standard 600 hours of listening when I decided to play around in the menu. And what did I discover? The K11, this guy, does not ship in neutral positions. What does that mean, neutral positions? I'm glad you asked. It means that there are digital filters to make the unit sound different. And one of the digital filters is selected by default. The K11 has five digital filters and a sixth one that is essentially with no oversampling, arguably no filter. It shipped with number three on, which file calls minimum phase slow roll off filter. It's terrible. It's unlistenable. If you don't own the CD, go stream Rebecca Pigeon's Spanish Harlem from Chesky Records. Crank the volume and listen to the first minute and listen to the S in the words Rose and Spanish. All the filters, one, Two, three, four, five. Exhibited siblings from extreme as number three to minimal as in number four, one and five. Number two was moderately bad, so we went to number six, non oversampling. The improvement was the difference between not wanting to listen to this and put it in the trash to actually enjoying the music. Fio, why ship this with bad filters applied by default? Why did any other reviewer mention these filters? Are they critically listened or do they simply lack my golden ears? Be aware, if you make this change when updating the firmware or resetting the unit in any way, the filter goes back to default number three, the minimum phase slow roll off filter, which is disgusting. So I cranked the volume without any filter applied and the sibilance was almost imperceptible. Now I continue with my 599 hours of additional listening. The K11 has three amplifier gain modes, low, medium, and high. Low gain and medium gain were very good. Well, not as good as the RME. Even when the RME is in high gain, it's better than the K11 in low gain. My easy to drive, but very low ohm Dan Clark Aeon open axes, I believe are in the 12 ohm range, could be driven to very loud volumes at low gain. The Four Seasons in G minor by the Swedish Chamber Orchestra could be driven very loud in medium gain and deafeningly high in high gain. I preferred medium gain as a compromise as I found myself hitting max 99 on the volume dial a few times in low gain mode while getting my bish on. And I wanted just a little bit more. As I said earlier, my headphones are pretty easy to drive and I actually do not own a highly inefficient pair of headphones. So for those of you who do, I'd probably recommend using the 4.4 millimeter balanced headphone jack because power almost triples from the 520 milliwatts into 32 ohm headphones to almost 1400 milliwatts. Admittedly, they, that's in high gain mode. FIO doesn't spec the other gain modes. Even if it's only a thousand milliwatts, in medium gain mode, you can safely assume that only a very few ultra expensive crappy headphones will ever need more power than the K11 can provide via the 4.4 millimeter balanced output. Where the FIO K11 excels is its easy to use menu system. Yes, RME, 
I'm talking to you. Because with the FIO, you simply hold down the volume knob for two seconds and you're in the menu. Scroll with the volume knob, click to enter menu options, and rotate to make changes. My preference for most things are to have either no lights or dim lights, and FIO makes that really easy. However, the fact that the FIO K11 has all these different colors makes me think a little too much time went into designing this for the teenage target market. Honestly, if you're going to add bling without substance, do a wrap. Why are only turntables available in custom wraps, like the Project's Artist Series turntables? FIO, will you please do a wrap with Diane Bish sitting on top of a big DAC, like the K9? And I guarantee you've got a real marketing hit on your hands. Yet another free marketing idea scientific audiophiles giving to the audio world at no charge. How does the K11 compare to the topping DX3 Pro? It's $129 versus $109 for the DX3 Plus Pro. It has better interface, but no remote. A nicer display than the topping, but the overall sound of the DX3 is better. How much better? Well, that's where our infinite rating system is for. The K11 has a 6.35 millimeter jack, where the topping only has a 3.5 millimeter IEM jack, which the K11 doesn't have. But the K11 does come with a 6.35 adapter for a 3.5 millimeter, which if you're an IEM person, you can just keep it plugged in when you take your IEMs to your phone. For me, my personal preferences, if I had to pick one, I'd go with the FIO K11 over the topping DX3 Pro, even though the topping sounds better. Why go with the lesser sounding product? Because the difference in sound quality is subtle, but the 6.35 millimeter jack on the K11 is a huge difference maker. A long time ago, I boxed up the DX3 Plus because I owned too many full-size headphones and I couldn't use, nor did I want to keep playing around with adapters or cable changes to deal with its IEM only 3.5 millimeter jack. If I was an exclusive IEM user, then I definitely prefer the DX3 Pro Plus over the K11. That brings us to the all-important rating, which everyone seems to be waiting for. And for those of you who don't watch the channel regularly, you're in for a treat because unlike other reviewers who rate half the products with the same number or stars, panthers, or thumbs ups, we have an infinite rating system. No two products are ever exactly tied. Now this hurts my channel because I can't do best of videos that rank all the products that tied and get more views based on a poorly designing rating system where I do a 2023 best of. But I care more about you, the viewer. What is the rating of the Fio K11? Let me be clear, the rating is based on one important factor. You turn off all filters. If you turn off all filters, then we get this. A barefoot rosé, the most awarded wine brand, coupled with this chicken spinach rice dish with a little bit of tomato sauce. So thanks for watching this edition of the Scientific Audiophile and click the notification button as we are currently testing the Fio K9 DAC amp, the Blafilly B3 Bluetooth DAC, and if it arrives, maybe the most controversial headphone ever made, the Verum 1 by Verum Audio.